Did you know that choosing the wrong CPU or motherboard socket can completely ruin your PC build? Whether you're building a gaming rig, a workstation, or just upgrading your system, understanding CPUs, sockets, and chipsets is crucial. In this video, I'll break down everything you need to know, from Intel's LGA sockets to AMD's PGA designs, and how chipsets control your entire system. You'll learn how to pick the right components, avoid compatibility issues, and maximize your PC's performance. Ready to build or upgrade like a pro? Let's dive in. In this course, we're going to talk about CPU, socket, and chipset. Socket. The CPU socket is the place on the motherboard where the CPU is placed. It is a square bracket made of plastic or metal, which contains several holes to accommodate the CPU pins. With the contact of these pins in the socket holes, this is what provides physical and electrical contact between the motherboard and the CPU. One of the most common CPU sockets is the ZIF, Zero Insertion Force, format. It is a type of socket where the CPU is installed in the socket without force. That is, it falls naturally into the socket. This allows the CPU to be placed and replaced without the need to solder. There are different types of sockets in ZIF format. One of the most common is the PGA pin grid array, which is primarily used by AMD. The PGA slot is square shaped with holes and a locking lever. We also have the LGA, Land Grid Array, which is mainly used by Intel and is newer than the PGA grid. The LGA socket is a metal case with a door that closes on the CPU and also locks with a lever. Unlike PGA formats, which have holes, the LGA socket has pins that make contact with the CPU. LGA compatible processors, on the other hand, do not have pins but buffers resting on the pins of the LGA socket. For the CompTIA a exam, you will need to know some characteristics of several socket types. And as we have seen, the types of sockets are classified by two different major brands, Intel and AMD. We'll start with Intel sockets, which use LGA Land Grid Array support. LGA 775. The first one we're going to talk about is the LGA-775 socket. It is also known as Socket T. It was released in 2004, and as the name suggests, it has 7 and 75 pins. The LGA-775 was the successor to Socket 478 and was designed for Pentium 4 and Pentium dual-core processors. We will now move on to LGA-1366 which has 1,366 pins and is known as Socket B. It was released in 2008 and was the successor to the LGA-775. It is used Intel Core i7 and Xeon processors. LGA-1156 Let's move on to LGA-1156, which is called Socket H, or also Socket H1. It was published in 2009 and contains 1156 pins. It was the first socket to be used by the Intel Core i3 and i5 processors. Next up is the LGA 1155, which is called the H2 socket. It was designed to replace the LGA 1156 and has 1155 pins, which is one less than its predecessor. So even though the LGA 1156 and 1155 have about the same number of pins, they are still not compatible with each other because the notches are different. The LG 1155 was released in 2011 and designed for Intel processors that use the Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge architecture. Let's move on to the LGA 1150, which is called Socket H3. This one has 1150 pins and was released in 2013. It supports both Haswell and Broadwell-based microprocessors. 
and to succeed, the LGA-1155. The last of the Intel sockets that we are going to see is the LGA-2011, also known as the R socket. It contains 2011 pins and was released in 2011. What a coincidence! It is the successor to the LGA-1366 and has been designed for high-performance CPUs based on Sandy and Ivy Bridge. Now, let's move on to the AMD group, which uses the PGA Pin Grid Array package. The first socket we're going to see is the AM3, which was released in 2009, and it's the successor to the AM2+. The AM3 contains exactly 941 pins. Next is the AM3 Plus socket, which is the successor to the AM3. It has 942 pins and was released in 2011. The advantage is that it retains a certain compatibility with the AM3. This means that processors designed for the AM3 will therefore work in AM3 Plus sockets. The next socket is the FM1. It was released in 2011 and has 905 pins. These socket types were designed for AMD APU, Accelerated Processing Unit Processors. The term APU literally translates to Accelerated Computing Unit. This socket model therefore allows it to function as a processor and a graphics accelerator on a single chip. Next is the FM2 socket, which contains 904 pins and was released in 2012. In the same vein, we also have the FM2 Plus, which was published in 2014 for 906 pins. FM2 Plus is simply a revision of FM2. We will now talk about the CPU, which is the main component of the motherboard. CPU literally stands for Central Processing Unit. This is the brain of the computer where all the data processing takes place. It is responsible for execute program instructions and to make logical calculations. The CPU is the largest component of the motherboard. It is a square chip that is inserted into the motherboard in a plastic or metal support called the CPU socket. Directly above the CPU is usually the heat sink, as well as the fan. This is to prevent the CPU from overheating. The speed of a CPU is measured in megahertz, mhz. Like what? One megahertz is equivalent to one million cycles per second. 500 megahertz gives 500 million cycles per second and 1 GHz is equivalent to 1 billion cycles per second. High-end processors average speeds of more than 3 GHz per second, or more than 3 billion cycles per second. Inside the processor is the core of the CPU. It is the place where the following take place, reading, and the execution of instructions, multi-core. A processor with a single core will process the instructions one by one. Today. Most processors have multiple cores. These are called multi-core CPUs. This type of processor can therefore handle more tasks than a single core processor. As an example, we have dual core processors. We also have the quad core in Semul, which have four cores. The two largest processor manufacturers are Intel and AMD Advanced Micro Devices. Intel is the largest manufacturer of processors and was founded in the late 1960s. It dominated the CPU market for a number of years until AMD's rise to prominence became its main competitor. Some of the Intel processors are known as processors. 286, 386, 486, Celeron, Pentium, and Xeon, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices is the second largest processor manufacturer, and it was also founded in 1960. But it wasn't until the mid-90s that it began to compete with Intel. Some of the AMD processors are known as K5, K6, Athlon, Duran, Sempron, Athlon 64, Opteron, Phenom, FX, and Ryzen, 32 bits.
VS64 bits. Processors, whether Intel or AMD, can be available in 32-bit or 64-bit versions, much like operating systems. The difference between a 32-bit and a 64-bit is the way it handles memory. A 64-bit processor will process a larger amount of data than a 32-bit processor. 32-bit processors normally can't address more than 4 gigabytes of CPU memory, while 64-bit processors can handle 16 exabytes, which is 4 billion times more memory than a 32-bit processor. This number is so huge that we can say that it is unlimited because we will never need to use this amount of memory. CPU operation. Now, let's get back to how the CPU works. In order for data or a program to run, it must first be loaded into RAM. So, the data is stored on the hard drive, and then from the hard drive, it is loaded into the RAM. And it is from there that the CPU can process the data or run the program. In a 32-bit system, since the maximum amount of memory that can be supported is 4 gigabytes, well, it won't be enough to hold all the data that the processor needs to run the computer as quickly as possible. When this happens, the excess data must be kept on the hard drive to compensate for this lack of memory. That is to say, instead of the data going directly from the RAM to the processor, it goes back to the hard drive, which slows down the PC. Whereas, on a 64-bit system, it is capable of storing much more memory than 4 gigabytes, which means there's more data, which can be loaded into RAM. Avoiding slowing down the hard drive and causing the PC to slow down, this is why a 64-bit system is faster than a 32-bit system. CPU Cache Now, we're going to talk about the CPU cache. That is, CPU memory. The CPU cache memory uses as a type of memory SRAM or static RAM, which is a very fast memory compared to regular DRAM, which is used for the main memory. The CPU cache in is therefore the internal memory of the processor, and its job is to store data and pending tasks before being used by the CPU. So, basically, the role of the CPU cache is to store the data that will be used regularly by the processor. By the way, when the CPU needs to access certain data, well, it will first check its cache before going to see the main memory, which are its RAM sticks. That's why the memory cache is so important, because if the CPU can access everything it wants directly from its super fast cache, then the computer will run faster. The memory cache is available in several levels. We have the level L1, which is also called the main cache. It is located directly on the CPU itself, and therefore, it runs at the same speed as the processor. This makes it the fastest memory cache on the computer. We have the level 2 cache, the L2 cache, which is also called the external cache. It is used to, to intercept recent CPU data, which has not been intercepted by the layer 1 cache. So, basically, if the CPU can't find the data it needs in the LAND1 cache, then it will look for the data in the L2 cache. And if it doesn't find the data, then it will go to the Level 3 cache, the L3. This tier is used to intercept data that has not been retrieved by the Tier 1 and Tier 2 caches. The L3 cache is often referred to as the shared cache because its memory is shared among all the CPU cores while the L1 and 2 caches are dedicated to their own CPU core. And if the data is not found on the different caches, then the processor will go down to the RAM. That is, the memory sticks installed on the motherboard. As we can also see, the L2 cache is larger than the L1 cache, but that doesn't mean it's faster. And the same goes for the L3 cache which is larger than the L2 and L1 caches. In all cases, the order of speed of the different cache levels is the L1, the L2, and the L3. So, on the support, we can see that the level 2 cache is located directly on the processor.
because it is a recent CPU. On older processors, usually the L2 cache is placed on a chip in the motherboard, independent of the CPU. Chipsets. We're going to finish the course on motherboard chipsets. One of the main and most important components of the motherboard is the chipset. Older motherboards were designed with a lot of different chips scattered all over the motherboard. There were chips for different things, such as chips for bus controllers, memory controllers, keyboard, etc. With the advancement of computer technology, engineers decided to reduce the number of chips, centralizing them. This is what we call chipsets. A chipset is therefore a set of chips. The chipset allows you to control the flow of data between the CPU, peripherals, bus batches, and memory. This means that all the different parts of the motherboard communicate with the processor via the chipset. The chipset basically consists of two chips. One is called the north bridge, and the other is the south bridge. The north bridge is, is located in the upper or northern part of the motherboard, so it all depends on the position in which you look at the motherboard. But basically, it's located near the CPU and is directly connected to it. It is also connected in memory and AGP or PCI Express slots. The AGP port is a fairly old video port, which has been replaced by the PCI Express port. So, for the CPU to communicate with the memory and the video bus, AGP or PCI Express, well, it must first go through the chipset of the north, the north bridge. It can be seen as an intermediary of communication between the processor, the PCI Express port, and memory. The second chipset is called the south bridge. It is located on the bottom or south of the motherboard near the PCI bus slots. The southern chipset connects to the following locations. PCI bus, SATA connectors, IDE, and USB ports. It is therefore responsible for the lower part of the motherboard, while the north bridge is responsible for the upper part. So, as we can see in the diagram, there is no direct connection between the CPU and the lower part of the motherboard. So, if the PCI, USB, IDE, or SATA ports have to communicate with the CPU, well, they will have to go through the bottom chipset, then the top chipset, before arriving at the CPU. In any case, the chipset at the top is faster than the one at the bottom, because the CPU, PCI Express, and memory are the most used and important components of the motherboard. Therefore, they must operate at the highest speed. While the bottom chipset is slower, because the PCI buses, SATA, IDE connectors, and USB ports don't need to be as fast as the other components. The important thing to remember is that components with a high speed are connected to the north chipset, and slower components are connected to the south chipset. The connection of these two different parts of the motherboard is done using channels called buses. And that's what we'll see in the next class.